Welcome back for another week of the New City Catechism. This week, we're looking at the question, what does God require in the fourth and fifth commandments? Grab your Bibles, your pens, and your journals, and let's jump right in. So glad you've joined us for another week as we look at a, a new question this week. Our question is, what does God require in the fourth and fifth commandments? But to find out our answer, we're going to do a little puzzle together. You think we could do that? So I'm going to put a puzzle up on the screen and you can pause it and you're going to need your journal and you're going to have to write out using the code what the answer for this week is. So feel free to pause the video now and solve the puzzle. Were you able to figure it out? And on the Sabbath day, we spend time in worship of God, that we love and honor our father and mother. So now that you've solved the answer to our question today, let's take a closer look at the fourth and fifth commandments. Open with me to Exodus chapter 20. I know we've been there for the past few weeks, but we're going to keep looking here at Exodus 20, and we're going to look at the fourth and fifth commandments, starting in verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us, and that you've given us an example of how to live, that you've given us your law to help us learn how to live. God, we pray that this time now would be set aside for you for the purpose of learning about you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to actually start with the fifth commandment first, and then we'll come back to the fourth. The fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Now, I have a question before we get into what that means. Who knows you best? Who knows the most about you? The answer is probably your parents. They know almost everything there is to know about you. They know what you like on your sandwiches. They, they know what your favorite food is. They know what makes you happy, what makes you sad, how to help you when you're feeling sick. What are some other things your parents know about you? Our parents are the ones who know us best here on earth. And they know what's best for us too. They usually try to teach us and help us learn so that we're safe and cared for. And the things they tell us to do are always in our best interest. Now think about God. God is our Father. He's our Heavenly Father. And He knows what's best for us also. And that's why He's given us the Ten Commandments to help lead us into what is best. Not just what we want, but what is best. But he also knows everything about us. He created us. He made us. And so when he tells us to honor our father and our mother, and that even attached to that is that if we do this, things will go well for us, that, that we will live long, isn't a mistake. Because he's appointed our parents to be our parents. He chose them to care and love us. And so... I want you to think a minute, what does it mean to honor something? Here's a simple definition of what it means to honor. To honor someone is to treat them 
according to their value. You're honoring them by loving and caring for them and treating them in a way that is according to their value. So if honoring someone is treating them according to their value, what's our value? What's your parents' value? What's your value? Well, God is the one who determined that, right? God is the creator of everyone and everything. And as God is creator, he's the one who set our value. You know what he says? He says, we're the most valuable thing in the entire universe. When God created man and woman, he said it was very good, better than all of creation. And he created us in his image, in his likeness. To honor your father and mother is to treat them according to their value. Their value set by God. And they do the same. They care for and treat you according to your value. Do you see how that works? And when we honor God, we treat Him according to His value. God is the most valuable of all. Everything we do and say should honor Him. So we get to practice honoring our father and mother all so that we can better honor God. Do you see how those are connected? Well, I want to keep talking about creation here for a moment because I think it's helpful in understanding our next commandment to keep the Sabbath day holy. Now, what is the Sabbath day? It's a good question. It's not an answer that all of us would know right away. Well, Sabbath is a day that was set aside by Jews to worship God. They wouldn't do a lot of work. They wouldn't do their household chores very much. They would just take the entire day to focus their worship on God. When Jesus rose again on the third day, he rose from the dead on a Sunday. And so his followers, Christians, began honoring the Sabbath as Sunday. So the Jews honor Saturday as their Sabbath and Christians honor Sunday as their Sabbath. So it's a day set aside to worship God. Now in the Old Testament, we see many rules and regulations on what that would look like. And we also see in the New Testament as Jesus with his disciples lived out what it looked like to honor God on the Sabbath. Again, we're treating God according to his value, but we don't just honor him, we worship him. This commandment also tells us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. To not forget, because it's easy to forget. It's easy to go throughout our day all the time and forget to worship God. We've spent a lot of time talking about what worship looks like, but I want to encourage you to think about what is your day of worship look like to God? What does your Sabbath look like? What do you do on Sundays? Do you gather maybe in your living room and watch on the live stream your church service? That's worship. Maybe you come in person and spend time with, with other believers. Maybe you find ways to connect with family and thank God for being together as a family. That's worship. The point is we need to take time to set it apart specifically to remember who God is and what God has done. Because if we don't do that, we will forget. I said at the beginning, as we were looking at this commandment to remember creation, I want to think back to that now. How did God create? He spoke, created everything that we see around him. And what did he do on the seventh day? God rested. That is the pattern that God, even in creation, has shown us how to live that we're not meant to go, 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 go all the time, especially because what that means is sometimes we forget about God. So just like God created for six days and rested on the seventh, so too we are to go about living our lives, honoring him every day, but particularly setting aside one day, a Sabbath, usually Sunday, as we've said, to remember and worship God. We've talked about keeping the Sabbath day holy as a day of worship. We've talked about what it looks like to honor your father and your mother. But one aspect we haven't yet talked about, and I just want to clarify to help you understand, what does it mean to be holy? What is holiness? And when God tells us to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, what does that actually mean? Well, it simply means to set it apart. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I like to cook. I like to make dinner, but I need to make sure I've separated everything and put everything in such a way that it's easy to use. So sometimes I'll take the spices or the lemon juice or the garlic or whatever it is we're doing and put it in a little bowl and put it off to the side. I set it apart so that it's ready to be used for the purpose I need it. 
Now that is kind of a silly example, but that's what God is saying we should do with our Sabbath day. We should set it apart. It should be different. We should keep it differently than all the other days. Did you even know that God calls you and me? He says that we're holy. We are set apart. Why? For what purpose? To love God and to love others. So you see, when we practice setting apart a day to worship God, when we practice honoring our father and our mother, we are learning what it is to live as God would have us live. He's working on you and me in that time to set us apart, to make us holy, to serve him and to love others. It is all connected. So I hope that today you've learned a little bit more about what it means to keep a Sabbath day holy and to honor your father and mother. Thank you so much for joining us. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It means a lot and it really does help us. And share these videos so more people can see and hear and know the truth of who God is and how it is we should live according to his word. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next time.